last time. What page were we on? Oh, no, just with the homework. 53 and 54. Let's take a look at them. Okay. So now let's take an honest look at stuff. I know that some of you got were confused on it. And I'll tell you, some of the stuff we were doing yesterday, it it's tough. It's tough because there's a lot of a lot of stuff there that does take take place. Um, but let's talk about 53, 54. What on page 53 would you like me to go over? Take an honest look at it, please. Yeah. Number eight. Okay. Number eight, we have y equals x minus 1 and x plus 7. Is that the one you wanted? Okay. And it says, determine if it is linear or nonlinear. Okay, so we said yesterday that linear, if x wasn't raised to an exponent, it's fine, right? But on this problem, do you remember this? Have you ever seen this term, FOIL? Where you go, it's called the double distribute, so x times x is x squared, and then x times 7 is 7x, and then negative 1 times x is this, and then negative 1 times that is that, and those happen to be like terms, so we get this. So by me multiplying these out by using FOIL, which the common core village idiots said, we don't use FOIL, we call it double distribute. Really? No. I have a degree in math. My guys have PhDs in math. Say FOIL. Common Core comes like, oh, we know better. No, you don't. You want to know who wrote Common Core? Teachers who sucked at teaching, who wanted to get out of the classroom, and so they wrote curriculum. Those are the people who wrote Common Core. Who didn't write Common Core? Teachers who really love what they do, staying in the classroom to teach because they thought they could make a difference with kids. So, double distribute. Common Core, a bunch of idiots. That's recorded. No. You want to know what the only high school in the state that said Common Core? No, we're not going to do it. No, you have to. No, we're not going to do it. Here. They threw Common Core out. They said it's stupid. There was no data to represent that it would work. We had the highest test scores in the state. We're not changing a thing. Pretty cool, huh? Love being a little bit of a rebel. Highest. Are we, our, we are the largest. We are sitting at 3756 as far as this morning goes. So 3,700, 3,756 wow. students are here at this school. The next biggest is Eagle Crest, and they have 3,400. And then, yeah, we have Grandview and Cherokee Trail are very close. They're just over 3,000 each. So those are your top four schools in the state as far as size. This is the largest high school in the state. This is the top performing high school as far as ACT test scores go. We are way higher than the national average. Why is that? Because you guys are just awesome. It's not teachers, it's us. It's you guys. I don't know. I, I have no idea how you guys are. Me? I don't know. It could be. Okay, what other questions did we come across on page 53, 54? There we are. Anything on either of the pages? Yeah. Ten. Ten. Number ten. Uh, looks like we have this graph, and then we have a couple dots that do that, right? It says find the domain of each function represented by the graph. Determine if it is discrete or continuous. Okay, so this is the point, it looks like 4 comma 2, do you agree with that? And the next point would be 8 comma 8. And then 12 comma, is that 12 comma 15 maybe? All right, so if we wanted to, they want us to list the domain. The domain is which value? X or Y? So we're at 4, 8, 12. Okay. Is it continuous or is it discrete? 
it's discrete because it skips. I would have to pick my pencil up to get to each point. Does that make sense? Cool. What else? Because it, so 11 would be continuous because it uh, includes everything in between, but it, because I have to pick my pencil up to go from dot to dot to dot, there's your discrete. Cool. Anything else? Good to go. If you feel you have appropriately done both 53 and 54, and I have not looked at because all you're going to turn in right now is page 53 because 54, the backside of it, is our homework. Go ahead and make sure your name's on it, please, first off, and pass it on forward, please. Nah. I'll take care of that a different day. Thank you. Do me a favor, you collect them all, put them in there. Thanks, brother. All right. Very difficult with your eyes. Get it on. Everyone get a note sheet? We good? Okay. First thing I just want to talk about, and then we'll... Oh, man, I'm falling all over the place. <laughs> that one is funny. <laughs> all right, first thing I want to talk about, and this is not on your notes. I just want you to watch. Okay, so let's say we have a graph that looks like this. Okay, I have no idea what mathematical function this would be. But let's say we have our x and y axis. Okay, so take a good look at this, and which one is the x-axis, the right-left or the up-down? Right-left, okay? So this entire line right here, that's our x-axis, you agree? So looking at our graph, describe to me just using your verbiage, how many times it appears to be above the x-axis? Does everyone feel comfortable saying four? So those four places are where this graph is positive. Okay? Does that make sense when I say that? Now, it's, it's kind of hard to decipher because a lot of you want to say, yeah, but on the left side of the y-axis, those are negative numbers. And you're absolutely right. But what do we know happens above the x-axis? They get higher. They're positive. They go, you know, start out. It's just our x and y axis, all, they, all the two of them are, are two number lines put together and made perpendicular to each other. And it's just for you to identify basically a geographical location on a flat surface. That's really what it is. So does everyone look at this and say, I can see four regions where this is positive. So... So do you feel comfortable saying that's positive right there and that's positive right there and this is positive right here and this is positive right here? So what we would do is we have certain values at each of these and I don't know what these numbers are. I just drew this in arbitrarily. But if I wanted to list where this graph is positive, I have to list in between these two and I have to list in between these two, and I have to list in between these two, and I have to list in between these two. And what that means is whatever those values might be on the x-axis, if you knew what your function was, so you had f at x is equal to, or y equals to, this function, if you were to plug in in any of those regions on the x in between, so these are my x values here. I have x values. Uh, this is like you know, negative 10, and this could be negative 8. I don't know. I'm just making this up. And this could be, say, negative 5 and negative 2. 
and this could be positive two and maybe positive six, and this could be like positive eight and positive nine. And I'm just breaking those up. But what that means is if I were to pick any number, decimal or not, in between those regions, if I plug it in, my answer becomes a positive answer. Does that make sense? Remember the input-output model? So if your input was a number in between those, your output would result in something being positive. Okay? The other regions to this graph are negative. They are below the x-axis. Okay? And I know that's stuff that we talked about quite a bit yesterday, and it's kind of tough to think about. All right, now, I'm going to undo the pink, not because there's anything wrong with the pink. Okay? So now I'm going to do something. Cool. Everything's gone now. Now, so we feel okay with me saying positive. Positive above the x-axis, that's all it means. All right. So now, let's take, and I don't want to get much feedback here from this one. Okay, so let's take here, here, here. These are a bunch of straight lines. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. So if I found the slope of each of those orange lines I just made, the slope would be positive meaning like it could be 2 over 3. Each of those lines has a different slope, but the slope's positive. And then here, I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw a bunch of these orange lines. And once I get up to a certain point, it will no longer be positive. But right now, these are all of these orange lines will have a positive slope to them. Okay? That means... That's the region of where the graphs are increasing. Increasing means you have a positive slope. And again, it, I could go throughout this whole problem and just keep drawing these orange lines. Just like this. And it kind of makes a cool looking pattern. Same here. And I haven't drawn all of them in. There's actually an infinite amount of lines because you have an infinite amount of dots but those are all where all where the graph or the our graph of our equation is increasing when it's increasing the slope has to be positive so there's two different things to think about we just talked about it being positive or increasing and what was the other thing I did with the pink was it positive as well so I've just used two terms interchangeably but they mean different things. So where is the graph positive? The graph is positive in between here and here and here and here. All of those orange lines on there show where the graph is increasing because the slope of those lines is also positive. So is it possible to have two things that mean the same thing as far as math goes, as far as positive and positive? Positive, positive could mean we're above the x-axis. Positive can also mean that we have a increasing slope. So I just wanted to kind of try and clear that up a little bit. Plus, I think that looks kind of cool. Okay. All right. So let's let's cruise through our our notes. So let's see. Circle ones that are linear. Linear, not, not. Do these subtract? I subtract four or subtract forty? Subtract twenty? Nope, not. Uh, what about this? Nope. What about this? Nope. Yep. What about this? Nope. Anything else? That's it. And again, if you don't, if you're recognizing that right now, saying, "Okay, I can see that being positive." Oh, actually, this one is. Yep. See, I looked at it wrong because I added a hundred each time, right? So that one works. Cool? Moving on. All right. What is standard form? Now, I don't want this to frighten you because standard form is actually going to become one of your best friends as far as math goes because it's a really easy way to graph. Really easy way to graph. A. 
thank you. Okay, this is standard form. I have AX plus BY equals C. A, B, and C are any numbers you want. X and Y are your variables that are staying as X and Y. The reason we're using X and Y is we're going to graph these on the X and the Y axis. Does that make sense? Sound okay so far? All right. So that's standard form. Do you have that written? Ready? Moving on. Okay. So if I look at right here, this is 0, comma, in this case, 0, comma, 3. And this right here, if I look at that, that is actually the point 6, comma, 0. And so what the standard form AX plus BY equals C will get you is we're going to start using something that I refer to as the cover method for graphing. And when I say cover method, I'm literally going to cover something up. When I cover something up, I'm going to solve for whatever variable I'm not covering, and that's going to tell me where it crosses that specific axis. Okay? So you either have the y-axis up and down, x-axis right and left. Is that okay? Can I move on? Okay. Watch how easy this is. Put your pencil down, save your pencil the table, neighbor to put their pencil down. Okay, we are going to graph this. Now a lot of people are like, dude, I got to solve for y first. Ready? Now, I'm going to put my hand up, and I'm going to cover something up. Now, I, please understand, B and I have a projector projecting an image. He might be able to see it on the back of my hand. So I have I really totally covered it up. But let's use our imagination, OK? So I'm going to cover this up right here. So I get positive 4y equals 12. Do you agree? you agree with that? So 4 times what number gives me 12? Three. three. So four times what number gets me that? So by me covering that up, that would allow me to solve that. And that would have said, what? Four times what number gives me? And so I know that y is equal to three. What letter did I cover up? Two x. Two x. So the letter was x. Agreed? If I cover something up, it means I want to eliminate it. If I want to eliminate it, that means that it becomes zero. So this was our x value. I'm going to now 0, 3. I'm going to plot that right here. How do I know it goes on the y-axis? Well, it was y equals 3. How do I know that? Well, y goes this way. OK? So what do you think I'm going to cover next? Yeah. OK, so again, I realize you can probably see it through my fingers. And I'm sorry that I'm not perfect. So 2 times what number gives me 12? 6. Okay, so 2 times 6 gives 12. So this right here is the point 6 comma 0. And how many points do you need to draw a line? Two. That's your basic term of geometry. You need exactly two points to define any line. Look at that. I just graphed that line. I didn't do anything magical. I didn't count. I just covered Yeah, you could have more points, yeah. But in order to define one independent line, it has to be two points that are different. Yeah? Would you, would you always cover up the x first? Oh, you can go whatever order you want. Does not matter. Just realize if you're covering up the x, you're going to plot the y value. If you're going to cover up the y, you're plotting the x value. Cool? Can I move on? Yeah. All right. So I want to do this. Let's see if this works. Where's my fill? There it is. There we go. Let's see if this works. All right, ready? Cover method. That's all covered, right? I know you can kind of see it. So five times what number gives me ten? Two. See how I did that? Ready? Move it over. So negative 2 times what number gives me 10? Negative 5. Agree? 
How many points do I need to define a line? Yes. That easy. There are some teachers I've seen in my career that make this so, and you're like, dude, what are you doing? No, don't make it that way. So I was just covering something up, okay? All right, ready? You're going to talk me through the next problem now. All right? I don't know what the next problem is. Okay. So I'm going to do this. Ready? I'm bringing out my tool. Is this an okay tool? All right. What would you like me to cover first, X or Y? Your choice. X. Y. All right. Ready? <clears throat> Eight times what number gives me 16? Two. Two. It's right here. Is that okay? Feel comfortable with that? Anything about that? You're like, wait a minute. Ready? Oops. Yeah. I want this to move. Get my pointer. Come here. Move on. Four, negative four times what number gives me positive 16? Negative. Negative four. Good. There it is. Connect the dots. Draw it through and through. Done. Good job. Who am I going to pick next? Jason, it's your... Your, who am I picking? Ooh. Your choice. <coughs> Sophia. Yeah. Sophia, all right. Sophia, you're up. Do you want me to cover X or Y first? Your choice. Uh, X. All right, ready? Yeah. So negative 3 times what number gives me positive 9? Negative 3. Good. So that's a Y, so I go right down here, put a dot. She might, she might be on break. All right, ready? <laughs> Sophia? Um, what do you think X is equal to? One. Oh, nine. Right? It's just, <laughs> it, it handed it to you, right? Yep. There you go. Then just draw your line right through it. <laughs> draw it as straight as you can. Done. Good job. Is that okay? It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. May I move forward? Sophia, who am I picking on? Jacob. Jacob. Jake. Hey, Jacob. This is a this is a special case. Agree? Yeah. What do we know that x has to be equal to in this problem? But it's going to be a line. It's not a point. Is that okay? Because we're graphing linear equations. Everyone agree with that? So this is a vertical line, just like that. Done. So x equals a number is a vertical line through that number. That's it. Okay, you want? I'll give you that point. You give me that point. You give me that point. Why? Joy, what do you got? Okay. Joy, are you doing it? Let's yeah. do it. All right, Joy. What do we guarantee we know in this problem? y equals negative 3. So here's my y equals negative 3 right here. Well, y equals a number is the horizontal line through that number. So these are special cases. So x equals vertical, y equals horizontal. So that's a great question. Okay, check it out. So this is my line, right? Mm -hmm. So here, let's come up here and do this. So if this is y equals 0, y equals negative 1, y equals negative 2, y equals negative 3, because I'm counting on that number line. The other one was x, x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, same idea. Cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you said um, some horizontal and then angle to the x. Common core, yeah. Why is it common core? It just was, it was... The sad part of Common Core is it was designed to be to make publishers rich by selling textbooks. Oh. And it was designed for computer companies to get rich by selling their software, and they made up all of this fictitious information about schools. Now, you, a, a commercial you might have remembered seeing was we ranked 19th in industrialized nations. That had taken a standardized test. It's like, well, what test did we 
take against him? Well, there was a test. Okay, great. What test was it? Well, there was one. Okay, now please answer my question. What test did we take? What are you measuring us against? Did we, was it ACT, SAT? No, but there was a test. Okay, what test did we take that we are ranked number 19 in industrialized nations? The United States is ranked number 19 against all these other countries. Well, there was a test. What test was it? Well, there was a test. <clears throat> the whole thing was a made-up lie. It was a made-up lie by the Koch brothers out of Nebraska, who are these billionaires who have all this money invested in computer companies. So if we can make up this lie, because the general public's too stupid to go back and understand what data is and what's actually fathomable information. So it was a habitual lie that was bankrupting school districts because they're like, oh crap, we better buy all these computers and all this software because we can then show that there's growth that's taking place. This school looked at it and said, we're not doing any of that. And guess who still has the highest test scores in the state? Us. You know who doesn't like this school? The Koch brothers can't stand this school. They're like, your parents, the stakeholders of this school, will not allow anything to wiggle to make this school different because what we're doing as a whole really is right. Are there some kids that are struggling? Absolutely. And we're trying to help. Okay? So we are out of here. I would just like to point out, I would like you to take a look at 57 and 58 for this evening, please. Other than that, I think the bell is supposed to ring soon. I can't see it. Four minutes? Four minutes? Okay. So.